An independent legal opinion, Cronier and Key, found that there were significant deviations from the joint venture agreements, particularly pertaining to quota and vessel usage fees to their Namibian partners. The Namibian partners contributed their quotas and two vessels to the JV, but they alleged that they have not seen fair distribution of profits. This is the crux of the current impasse between the various Namibian stakeholders in the Irongo Sea Products joint venture. The JV established in 2001 consists of local companies Serosic Fishing with 15%, Arechanab with 40%, Irongo Seafoods with 27%, and Irongo Marine Enterprises with 18%. Irongo Marine Enterprises is a subsidiary of the South African group Oceana. EME also has a substantial shareholding in all the local companies that are part of the JV, making Oceana the majority shareholder. On paper, they hold 51%, but according to the Namibian partners, this is not reflected in the sharing formula. Joint ventures are a system introduced and supported by government to encourage Namibianization in the fishing industry. Often, the quotas allocated to right holders in a JV depend on the extent to which a JV has included Namibians and value addition. The Rongosi Products JV rents or charters the vessels contributed by the Namibian shareholders to the JV to EME, who then catches, packages, and sells the fish on behalf of the JV. EME pays the JV a quota usage fee of 15% and charter fees. These were the conditions the parties allegedly agreed to in the charter and quota usage fee agreements. Namibian shareholders have questioned how the partnership is beneficial if EME deviated from signed agreements over the years, which are supposed to be the documents guiding the partnership. The shareholders say there were no annual general or shareholders meetings where minutes and resolutions were recorded. They claim exclusion until 2021-2022 when information became apparent and they questioned why the charter agreement was not applied correctly. The dispute then became about the shareholders' quota contribution to the JV and how EME benefits from the quotas. One of the shareholders' representative, Philip Munenguni, believes locals were blindfolded and cheated by EME. Another shareholder, Maria Dex, could not comment but confirmed that a legal draft report has been circulating and it needs to be discussed with all parties. The local shareholders further claim the composition of the board of directors is not in line with shareholders' agreement because representatives are either EME or Oceana employees, making them the players, referees and linesmen. In a statement in response to NBC, Oceana Group described the relationship perfect and agreements as successful over the past 20 years. The statement indicated that in 2022, both parties selected attorneys Cronier as an independent party to review mutual deviation from the agreements. Amongst other things, Oceana says the draft report found that the charter agreements and fees were consistently applied and the JV benefited. However, this is questioned by Namibian shareholders. EME Oceana's operational company in the JV is also being investigated by the Namibian Competition Commission over alleged price fixing, colluding with other big players in the industry to fix horse mackerel prices. In the meantime, the joint venture has suspended its Namibia CEO, Dr. Martha Umati, who has started questioning the relationship and treatment of Namibian shareholders. Renate Rengura, NBC News, 
swakodmanji